So, all right. So, my name is Martin. Um, I'm uh, uh, I'm from Germany. Uh, I studied in the U.S. I uh, I worked there for a while, and uh, one day, as a hobby, as a side project, um, I developed Last Tools. Uh, mainly because I needed the points. I was working on a triangulation engine, and I needed a lot of points. And I found this .las file on the internet, which contained a lot of points. But I, I wanted to read those points in my software, so I was Googling uh, open source last reader software, so I could integrate it into my software. I couldn't find anything. So I downloaded the specification of the LAS file, and I wrote a little reader and writer library. Because I'm a computer scientist, that's what I learned. So at the end, I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. So I zipped up the folder and put it on my web page. So when somebody Googles in the future, they can find something. And because I put it in a folder called Last Tools, which is more or less still the same folder as it is today. That's why the software is now called Last Tools. Had I known this would one day become my main profession, I would have come up with a more clever name. Because I went to a conference and there was this woman walking up to me and she said, so you're working for LA Stools? I don't know if you know what stools means. It, it also means wooden bar furniture. Uh, so that was the uh, first time it occurred to me that one could misread that. Uh, so if you ever publish something on the web, you know, it may become your company of the future. Think about the name a little bit. Uh, and uh, in 2012, uh, I then started a little company uh, with help of the European Space Agency uh, to, to basically sell those tools commercially. Uh, the main reason I switched from academia to, to a commercial sector was because I got fired from my job in 2010. Uh, and then I used the opportunity to try something new. But I, I, I still remain very close to the academia because my software is very it's very uh, scientific. It's main. It's very much used in uh, by technical people and lots of universities across the world. And I also enjoy teaching. Also, I haven't given up on academia. I, I still uh, supervise students sometimes and even publish papers occasionally. We mainly be using the GUI, the graphical user interface, these um, to for the exercises today. And tomorrow we look a bit into scripting, meaning using uh, ASCII text files where the commands are in a sequence together, which then allows you to process large amounts of LiDAR data while, while you go out for coffee or lunch with your friends um, and the computer is doing all the work. The, the, the advantage of a GUI is it's nice to explain individual options during the training phase. But a GUI is very annoying if you do the same thing again and again. Because often, or for large amounts of data, because every time you have to start the GUI, you have to set all the boxes, all the menu items, and then press run. And then when you come back, it's done. You have to do the same with the next module. And the nice thing about scripting is, you figure it out once using the GUIs, until you have a workflow you think is good for you, then you take that same commands into a batch file, and now you can run it overnight. There's no more interaction required. So in the bin folder, I would like you to find last view. Last view, so if you have sorted them uh, by alphabetically, it should be down here, last view. And if you just double click that, then the GUI comes up. And if everything went okay, then it should say license in the GUI. All the last tools we use today will start with this gray looking box. Hence, getting used to the menu is a useful thing for the exercise. On the left side, this is part of the left side, that all GUIs look exactly the same. On the right side, 
the GUIs are different depending on the tool. So to load data into the into the GUI, you need to use this browse rollout, and then you see the folder structure, and you can go up one folder. Um, this slash dot dot means if you double click that, you will go up one folder. Okay. If you go up one folder, you are in this last tools folder. And there is a data folder in here. And if you go into the data folder, you see uh, you see a number of different sample files. And uh, one I would like you to look at is maybe at France. France.laz. If you double click this, it loads it into the program. But of course you don't see the LIDAR data yet, you just see a bounding box. What you do see a little bit is what's in the file. You see the header information of the file. You see for example how many points are in the file. This is a very small file, 100,000 points. You see the point type, you see the bounding box, so the X values go from this value to this value. And, uh, and you see a few other things. But we wanted to, to look at the data, you, you have to press this button here, view. And, and now you may think, why still no viewing? Yet another pop-up window, and this window actually is teaching you the command line. And these command lines are used to make batch scripts, because that's actually what is really used to view the data. And as we look at them again and again, you basically learn the command line as we go. So if I press start, then um, I'm looking at the data set now. In the default mode, I, we can pan this data set around. You can switch the interaction mode by pressing space on the space bar, then you go from pan to translate, translate, or pressing space again to zoom, zoom in and out, pressing again, tilt. Now this is not the best viewer. There are a lot of viewers out there that are much better than this one, and you should find your favorite one. Uh, most of them are free. Uh, this viewer is the viewer I use to investigate the data and I always add something new when I need something new. Uh, so it has a few tricks that others don't have. Um, what do I see here? I see LiDAR points colored by elevation. And if you think the points are too small, you can make the points bigger. How do you do this? Well, there are hotkeys on the, on the keyboard for everything. And if you forget the hotkeys, you can see the hotkeys by right-clicking, right-clicking, and a pop-up menu opens. So if you right click, a pop-up menu opens, and if you want the points to be larger, then you can choose it through this menu option. Or you press equal on the keyboard. So everything that's here in brackets is the hotkey on the keyboard. That makes it faster if you use last view a lot. So if I either select the equal, then the points get bigger, plus plus, equal, equal or minus, 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 makes them smaller again. So th these are very useful keys to know because as you zoom in, you want to make the points uh, more big, uh, so uh, it looks nicer. What else can you do here? Or oh, you can color it by different, by different attributes. Right now I told you this is colored by elevation. Uh, you can color it by classification. And if it's all black, then you know these points are not classified. Uh, you can also investigate individual points by, by going over some point, like this point here. And it's useful to make them a little bigger. And then pressing I on the keyboard, I. Then it tells you for exactly that point where your mouse is pointing at, it tells you the coordinates and it tells you the classification and if it's 
which return it is, and so on. Minus, 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 make them a little smaller again. Another very useful colorization is by return. So now you see the LIDAR points by return. 